I am William Anderson. I hail from the best state in the union, Colorado. There it is. By way of Denver, yes, yes. Shout out to the DPS squad in the building. But it is my honor, my pleasure, I get to introduce a man from Cortez, Colorado, which is about six to eight hours away from Denver. Colorado's way too big, right? If you can travel eight hours in one direction and you're still in the same state, that is a serious problem. But seven to eight hours away, this man works so hard at being able to touch and reach all of the students that he has in his classroom. He learned to read when he was six months old, yes. He learned to write when he was eight months old, yes. Quite the savant he is. It's not true. He's an ordinary human being like the rest of us. <laughs> he turns out he's a regular person like the rest of us in this room. But <laughs> he does teach eighth grade math in Cortez, Colorado. Please, ladies and gentlemen, I know we've been eating, I know we have been enjoying ourselves, but please, you might want to get a pen and paper out to be able to hear the message that this man is going to bring. Please, can we get a tremendous applause for the Matthew Kefauver. So I'm that teacher who comes to school way before his first class starts. And I'm often the one who stays late after school to help a student who needs extra help. I'm the teacher who gives up his lunch hour to grade papers. And I'm even that teacher who makes up a song when his eighth graders hang out at their lockers too long and they won't go to class. <clears throat> and it goes a little something like this. <clears throat> Go to class, go to class, everybody go to class, everybody go to class. Everybody go to class. <laughs> so whatever it takes, right? I, <laughs> I mean, I bet that about 98% of the people in the audience have done something that ridiculous to get your students' attention. I'm also the teacher who pulled all 90 of his students into a classroom one year ago this very day, and I stood in front of them and I said, I have cancer. And the week before, I was teaching my fourth hour math class when I got the phone call from my doctor. The first thing that he said was, Matt, I'm as surprised as you, but you have cancer. I was diagnosed with stage three thyroid cancer. Now this kind of cancer is actually very treatable, but it's also something to take care of right away. And so he scheduled the surgery to have my thyroid removed the very next week. Now I've always been the type of teacher who is honest with his kids, and I didn't want to make up some lie about missing school in the coming weeks. So I told them the truth, including the good news that the cancer was very treatable and that I would be back with them as soon as possible. Now, I'll never forget the silence in the room on that day. You could literally hear a pin drop. And yes, it definitely was an intense moment, but it's actually what happened afterward that changed my whole perspective. Now, I've been an educator for over two decades now like many of you in this room. But the most powerful moment that I had as a teacher happened to me just 12 months ago. And it wasn't in my classroom. It wasn't when I told my kids that I had cancer. It also wasn't at an education symposium or on a class field trip. It was in my own home. So after my surgery, I had a heavy dose of radiation that kept me out of the classroom for about eight weeks. During that time, I was confined to my home to heal. 
And at first, I thought, this will be great because I can catch up on some reading, right, next to the bed stand, and relax. I mean, who wouldn't want a summer break in the middle of winter? But about two weeks in, I started to feel a little bit lonely and maybe even a little bit depressed. And at first, of course, I thought, well, it's probably the cancer, dummy. <laughs> but <laughs> it actually was a feeling that I couldn't shake. And I couldn't figure out exactly what it was until I realized what I was missing. I missed Ben's superhero obsession. I missed Kaylee's incessant talking. I missed Chris's corny jokes. I missed my kids. But it was more than that. It was more than just missing them. As I looked around my living room at 100 heartfelt notes that the kids had sent to me, I realized that I loved them. What I felt was something that teachers don't talk about nearly enough. As a matter of fact, it seems to be a forbidden word in our field. Although we see it and we feel it every single day in our classrooms, love. I realized how much I missed my kids because I love them. And it took a cancer diagnosis and eight weeks away from them for me to realize just how much of an impact they had had upon my life. Now, usually at these conferences, the stories that we share are about how we impact our kids through the hard work that we do. And as someone who's committed his life to the profession, I know just how much that matters. But I wonder what would happen if we talked about how our students have impacted us about how that bond makes us better teachers, and how love is the integral part of our success as teachers. Yes, I'm a middle school teacher who's a man, and I love my kids. Now, making education reform more personal and more focused on caring isn't a new idea. In fact, Berkeley professor David Kirp wrote a piece in the New York Times about this very subject this past August. He said to focus solely on business and standardized tests and what some call disruptive innovation isn't completely working because some reformers don't implement relationships into that equation. And he contended that the most effective approaches foster bonds of caring between teachers and their students. As a matter of fact, he had evidence. One example was a study that he did in the Chicago public school system in which he identified 100 elementary schools that had substantially improved their performance and 100 schools that had not. The key difference between the two schools was the presence or absence of social trust. This past summer, two Finnish researchers published a piece in the International Journal of Education about what it would look like if they implemented love-based leadership in schools. And their formula is actually pretty simple. People who lead with love and trust have followers that show loyalty and commitment. And this is because of the positive emotions that these leaders bring with them, their love and compassion. In other words, happiness. Happiness leads to engagement, productivity, and commitment. So now we know that studies that show positive emotion, trust, and student-teacher bond make for effective teaching. But why do we shy away from this reality in our strategies? But most importantly, why do we shy away from the word? Why isn't love a part of our needs assessment? our teacher meetings, our school conferences. Because I see examples of love in the teaching I do every single day. I witnessed a gym teacher buy a pair of shoes for a student and then claim that they were extra. I've seen countless teachers give up their lunch hours because they have a student who needs more time. And most recently, just last week, I witnessed a teacher put together a zombie Halloween outfit for a student 
who was going to the Halloween dance, and the teacher knew that the parents weren't able to put the outfit together. So we've all heard the expression that they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. When we admit to ourselves that we love our kids, we're making a deep emotional investment in their success. And it's more than just caring whether or not they pass our class this semester. We're actually investing in the future that is them. I encourage each and every one of you to take a little time to be introspective. And let's be honest with each other about how we truly feel about our students. Now, you may be sitting there thinking to yourself, but what about that one student, right? We all the one. And it is true that teacher-student relationships are really complicated and they're messy, but so is love, isn't it? When I finally got back to school on January 6th, one of my favorite students, Ben, came running up to me and he said, Mr. Kefauver, I held everything together while you were gone. <laughs> and I laughed and laughed because I knew at that point that I was back where I should be. Everything felt right in the world and finally I felt that light of my students' love once again. It took me 20 years and a cancer diagnosis to realize that I love my students, that the work that I do and the impact that these kids have had on me have made me the effective teacher that I am. If we can turn our view away for just a moment from textbooks and tests and look inward, I truly believe that we already have everything we need to make a difference in the lives of both teachers and students. Thank you.